Look at these grown ups, man. Look at these grown ups. Look at these grown ups playing like kids. Yes. It's really exciting to see that more African Americans are making Africa home again. And I must repeat that if you look like me and you live in the diaspora, this is your route. And I want to welcome you all officially to the motherland. Welcome to Africa, the cradle of mankind, the home of Africans in the globe. Listen, don't shy away of your roots. Don't shy away of where you came from. And I must tell you, feel proud to call yourself an African. It has grown up. more super excited to see African Americans investing in the motherland, calling this place their home, mingling with Africans, doing businesses with Africans. My goodness, I feel like crying, but I won't cry just because of you. Listen, a year ago, I was here. My feet touched down on this ground and there was nothing. It was more like a virgin land because I did a video on that fish farm. You guys remember? Evans, the fish farmer, the tilapia guy. This is right opposite. But when I came, there was nothing in here. And to see that a fellow brother, not born on the motherland, born in the diaspora, came, saw the opportunity, and decided to add value to this land makes me want to shed tears, man. The revolution is happening. And it's about time you all take part in that revolution. Listen, I'm not going to give up on you until you make Africa home again. I feel like my brother is super excited. He doesn't even want to come and welcome me. But I'm going to welcome him to the motherland because, yo, my, yo, my brother, <laughs> welcome oh, home, you. man. Thank you, thank you. You're living your best life. Every day, man, every day. Are you living or surviving? No, I'm living now. You're living. I'm surviving for a while, but I'm living now. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in America, you're working hard all the time, all the time. You're on this, this rat race treadmill. But here you get to work and you still have time for family and friends. So this is what life is about. You're living. Amara. Hi. Come, baby. Come. Oh, look, there goes my wife. Oh, wow. Babe, bring Amara. Amara, come. Come meet Watermaya. <laughs> it's because of him your daddy's here. <laughs> Your, your daddy came here because of me, eh? Oh, oh he's bringing plenty of African Americans back oh. home. <laughs> oh, 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 you're coming to me? To oh, my goodness, that's so cute. That's so cute. So this is the woman responsible for me never leaving. <laughs> you see, she's giving me beautiful children. Oh, right. We have one on the way too. Oh, so thank you. Yes. Congratulations. Man. So this is my wife. She's from Entuatre, right, right outside of Sunyani. What, what, what is that? Entuatre. Entuatre. <laughs> my friend, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> my friend, stop it, man. Entuatre. Entuatre. See, I'm learning small. <laughs> I have to get my Ghanaian. Oh. So. No, you, you, yeah, you guys look beautiful the, together. It's the border right? region. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Yes. Oh, hi. And then you see this little beautiful one. Right? Thank you. Okay, so, nice to meet you. So I get to, you know, give back to the diaspora and, you know, help them, more of them transition to have a beautiful family here mm. and do it in a sustainable way. And that's the key. Listen, in America, 
African Americans think that Africans don't like them. Yeah, I've heard that. Did you also believe that? For a while I did until I came to Africa. What changed? Well, you know, what changed was the way that they welcomed you when you came here. He said if these people don't like us, they wouldn't welcome you. And the thing that let me know that they really loved and appreciated us, when they would always say, you're invited, I would see them eating. And every time, even though it may be their last meal, they say, you're invited. So the fact that they're willing to share their meal with you and have you share an intimate experience like that, there's no way a person can hate you and say, come and, and share my food with me. You've done something that I personally want to celebrate you. Thank you. Because a year ago, you see that fish farm over there? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I don't know if you ever watched that video. I sure did. And you can't... I just didn't know it was that fish farm. You didn't know? <laughs> no. I, I came out like, what is that? And then the guy started explaining the fish farm and I said, yeah. And then I, I saw your episode. And then the guy, I actually met him. So then I saw his face. I said, you're the guy that wore the money interview. <laughs> but he still didn't tell me it was this one because he has several fish farms oh, okay. throughout the continent. But yes, this is it. Exact same fish farm that I came to do a video on. And right opposite, there was nothing. And you are adding value to this line. Well, that's because of you. The spirits called me here when I saw the video. That's how we ended up here. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm more super excited for you because of what you're doing. But yeah. I, I believe that most of them don't know what you're doing. Nope, they sure don't. Please, what are you doing? So what I'm doing is I'm creating a community that makes transitioning to the continent a sustainable experience. And what I mean by that, my is I don't know if you know, a lot of African-Americans are coming home mm. thanks to you, thanks to the group at Afrochella that are connecting people in a meaningful way. But a lot of people are also leaving because they come here and they run out of money, right? You have to come here to find out that Accra is the second most expensive place to live. Fact, <laughs> right? <laughs> but um, in America, typically you pay one month rent, one month security. A lot of us come here with $20,000, $50,000, $100,000. And if you want to live at the same level that you lived in America, sometimes you're paying for one or two years in advance. Well, once you do that and then you're paying to, you know, transportation and get around, your money is going, but nothing is coming in. Mm. And that's where Shark Island Resort and residents come in. I encourage those in the diaspora looking to come back to purchase a part of this community, own the home, and then we rent it out and manage it for them and wow. provide all of the um, external activities and amenities that keep their unit occupied. Mm. And one of the great things is, we're right across from Aqua Safari, the number one visited attraction yep. in Big Ada. Yep. So, you know, we give people that opportunity to experience Aqua Safari, and those who have already experienced can now experience Shark Island. You're saying Shark Island? Yeah. Are there sharks in here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a very good question. <laughs> Are there sharks in here? No sharks. Even though we're right near the estuary and the Atlantic Ocean, there's no sharks here. <laughs> the sharks are sea breaches. The sea breaches are underwater submersible. And I think you saw that, you know, Ibrahim Mahama was trending exactly, here lately. Exactly, exactly. So what I want to do is, you know, you don't have to be wealthy and rich like Ibrahim Mahama and those boys to experience that. So now they could come at Shark Island and they could rent a sea breacher. They could rent one of our jet cars. They could run around on our overwater obstacle course. So. Please, when you want to use the, uh, you want to go down, Please don't go too much because we just lost billionaires, man. So just use the, sh the yeah. shark on, on, on top of the surface, man. You know us black people, we don't go too far. <laughs> we only, you only go five meters and then back up. <laughs> don't go too down, please. We don't go too far. Are you still selling? Yeah, we're selling, but the beachfront is sold out. But fortunately, I own four islands over here. So we're opening four up islands. four islands. I know so many people love beachfront, man. Yeah. So, I mean, they can get the beachfront, but right now we're selling our condos. So we have the story buildings coming up in the back and then that's what we're selling. So we have the ground floor, the uh, first floor and the second floor. You live right here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you live here and you're building? Yes, I built this home because I want it to be on the property. Um, I think when you came, you saw some of our clients leaving. So yep, yep. some people came, they just bought, we just sold two units. So I wanted to be here and not have to travel from Accra, East Lagoon, where I stay now, to be able to sell it. So I built this home and it, it functions as our office. That's incredible, man. Yeah. But, but uh, if the beachfront is sold out, are you still selling behind? Yes. So the story buildings will be back here. We have six story buildings that are going to go up and they could purchase one of those units. Each building has six apartments, two bedrooms, 1,550 square feet. 
Um, I don't know how many meters that is. You guys do meters here. <laughs> yeah. We do square feet in exactly. America. Um, so yes, we're making those available. We have 30 out of 36 units mm -hmm. left of mm -hmm. those. And then, you know, we'll open up our second island in the beachfront since for those who want beachfront. Since it's sold out, I guess it's affordable then. Uh, you know what? Unfortunately, I have to say yes. I didn't want to make it too expensive so that our people at home that were trying to get to come back yeah. can't afford it. Because yeah. in the U.S. properties like these, these are three bedrooms, 1,815 square feet. These things will sell for three, four hundred thousand dollars easy. Mm. So we're selling them here for one hundred and seventy nine thousand dollars. One hundred and seventy nine thousand yeah. dollars. Our two bedrooms, one hundred and twenty seven thousand. And our condos, the ground floor units is ninety nine thousand. You know what? I really want to know more about you. All right. How long have you been on the motherland? I've been in Ghana now going on five years. I came here October of 2018. Left, went back to the States, came back December of 2018. Signed my contract with an organization here, left, went back to the U.S., packed all of my things and came back February of 2019, and I've been here ever since. What did you come here to do initially? Initially, an organization that shall go unnamed brought me out here to improve their health care. And so I, I developed a technology called Daycare Health App, and it allows Africans in the, uh, in the diaspora to connect their family members here with health care workers, mm. but it also allows local Ghanaians here to have access to medical transportation to and from the hospitals. Wow. When I first came here, Ghana only had 16 working ambulances in 2018. Uh, thanks to the work of the president, now you guys have 321 ambulances. Mm. It may sound like a lot, but for 35 million people, that's not a lot. Yeah. So I built the app for this company so that they could use it and employ all of their members of their organization to work on the platform. So we trained them in CPR, first aid, provided them with first aid kits. But unfortunately, it didn't work. I learned the meaning of Ghana man time Whoa. and chop money. So it didn't work out, but I think that that was the, the tool needed or the vehicle to get me here to Ghana. So that's how I got here. You didn't work hard and you never gave up? No, no. First of all, I'm Guyanese. I'm a United oh, okay. States Marine. Okay. And, you know, no retreat, no surrender. We don't, we don't give up, we don't quit. And for me, I can't let, you know, something that is difficult beat me because I always feel like there's a, a learning lesson. And then you become better when you, you go through challenges. So yeah. I stuck it out because, like I said, I'm Guyanese. Yep. When I came here, the culture was so similar to the culture back in my country, right? And when I was growing up in Guyana, you know, and I moved to America, in America they would always say, where you from? Because I had the accent, I would talk in pigeon. And I said, man, I'm born in Guyana. And they say, you're from Ghana. I said, no, Guyana. <laughs> so then when I came here, the organization that brought me here, my mom or my dad, I can't remember who called. And just like a Ghanaian, when you guys switch from English to tree, yeah. I started talking in Patois, and they all were looking at me like this. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, I'm not American, I'm Guyanese. <laughs> I just grew up in America. And, and through that organization, I found out that, you know, a lot of Guyanese come from Ghana. Ghana. And so I did, I traced my African um, ancestry and found out that a percentage of our blood, it could be found in Central Region in Anomabo. Mm, mm. So I'm fancy. You're fancy. Hey. That's how I'm going to record it. So he I'm here. understand anything. <laughs> no, I don't. I know small tree. What's in I'm then? Not... What's in then? Fancy. Right. No, What's I, in there? no, I haven't learned fancy yet. <laughs> no, no, because I'm, 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 I'm a fancy guy, no. you know? I didn't know that. Ah, I'm a fancy guy? Yeah. Oh, you're my brother? <laughs> ah, no, 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 my brother. But water. Uh, I'm yeah. learning tree. I'm learning Dangbe. The people here speak Dangbe. Okay. I'm learning Ga. I'm learning Eve. Like, but but, but since, since you trace your back, your roots to yes. fancy, you need to. That's the first language you need to learn. I know. Let me teach you one. I feel, teach me one. What's in then? Or ten then? Yeah, it's just like saying, how are you? How are you? So it's like saying, it's the same. It's the same, good. Oh yeah? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh, hey, yeah, but you know, the fancies don't say, hey, yeah. say we say, boko. Boko. Exactly. Okay. So, or ten then? Boko. boko. <laughs> oh, I, I'm a fast learner. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Exactly. So, now you moved here? Yes. Your first business did not work. Yeah. That's why you decided to go into real estate. No, but I still kept doing my first business. Mm. I just now, I, you know, broke out of the contract with that organization and I started doing it here in Ghana. And it was working, but unfortunately, a lot of the African Americans were the only one patronizing it mm. because I learned that a lot of Ghanaians don't make enough money on a monthly basis to have discretionary income for that. Mm. So we pivoted our, our business model and we started targeting 
Ghanaians outside so that they could use the app to connect their family members. But while doing that, mm -hmm. I, I was looking for property so I could build my own home. Mm. And I found this island first. And that's when the idea came to me because several of my friends ran out of money and they left. And one guy in particular, Corey, I missed him. So I mm. said, you know, if I could do something, I could get Corey back. Let me build a, a home for him. Wow. And it started out for doing it so I could get that guy back because we were on the same page. And, you know, unfortunately, he went back to Barbados. He didn't go back to America. And I missed the dude, right? Because we, we were on the same page. So it started like that. And then I said, you know what? I have all this space. I can't use it for myself. Why not make it available to diasporans and manage it for them so that it, they have a vehicle that's making the money? So that's how it, it really came about. What has been the major challenge since you moved to the motherland? The challenges at first for me was, you know, adapting to Ghana man time, I'll be honest. Yep. Um, but the good thing about that is I'm learning that it's teaching me patience, mm. right? Now, I'm not saying that it's still good that they should take forever, <laughs> but um, that was the, the biggest difficulty for me. And then also the systems are not in place yep. to function as smoothly as developed countries in the West, right? But also that's where the opportunities are, right? Um, so I, I figured from that, I had the opportunity to come early and watch it develop. And what helped me understand that was somebody said to me, Marvin, you know, Ghana's only at the time 65 years old. You have the developed countries that are 400 plus years old. It's like expecting a three-year-old to do the same thing a 25-year-old yep. And once they said that, it put it in perspective. But now because of that switch in, you know, my perception of things, I actually now, you know, don't really have too much to complain about. I don't. And let me tell you a secret. I haven't actually married a Ghanaian. Yes, I did. Bro, you're more like a Ghanaian now. Oh, I'm very Ghanaian. <laughs> I don't even eat none of the foods that I used to eat in America. So I eat my amutio, right, which is my favorite smoked salmon and my groundnut soup. I have my, yeah. you know, okra stew with, you know, um, banku. the banku, yep. right? And one of my other favorites is the bean stew with uh, plantains. Yeah. Like, I love that. So my diet is fully 100% Ghanaian diet. You see, let me tell you something. <laughs> That's a typical Ghanaian stomach. <laughs> oh, I have to hold it in, right? <laughs> I see you trading. Yeah, exactly. I'm embarrassed, so I have to start exactly. trading. That's a typical Ghanaian stomach. <laughs> yes, it's but, broken out small. But, but you know what? I want, I want to help you yeah. with the app that you have. Yeah. I know there are a lot of... Um, Africans in the diaspora, especially Ghanaians that watches the uh, yeah. watches my channel, right? So if you can tell them about the app for them to download it and use it, yeah, just yeah, feel sure, free sure. and do that. Yeah, because they, they need, I have over 300. So let me tell you in the diaspora, yep. any African in the diaspora, yep. the daycare, health and transport app empowers you so that when your family members on the continent call and say, Charlie, I need some money, I need to go see my doctor. You could say, no problem. I have the daycare app. You download our daycare app and you could get medical transportation to or from your family member's home to their hospital, to their doctors, for as little as $3, right? But then also you know that the money that you're sending for your family to get healthcare is really being spent on what it is because that's the challenge one Ghanaian told me. He said, I love my family, but sometimes they call too much asking for money. But I don't want to not say send the money when they say they need it for healthcare. So now if you download the daycare app, you could use the daycare app and you could manage your family's health and ensure that they get the care that they need. Connect with our doctors, connect with our nurses, and provide non-emergency medical transportation to their doctor's appointment. Does it mean you're a medical practitioner? No, no, no. So I actually used to do medical logistics. So okay. one of my biggest contracts was with the American Red Cross. So I would transport time sensitive uh, materials like blood and organs to and from medical facilities for patients who needed it. And at first my platform was only transportation. And then because people needed attention to nurses during COVID, mm. they needed you know, to consult with doctors and maintain social distancing. That's what really gave my app the boost while I was here. And that's what got me some of the money that I needed to start living a comfortable life in Ghana. I started licensing it. So that's what I do. Um, since, since you are more into medical logistics, yeah. is there any project that you're doing that gives back to the society? Oh, absolutely. So, you know, what we do is, my company, we always want to practice corporate social responsibility. So what we do is we go into all of the communities and we do free health screenings. You know, things that we take advantage 
of in the states and think that it's not important like just being able to check your weight so we go into the communities we check their blood pressure we check their um, heart rate we give them you know any medication that they need uh, over-the-counter stuff of course to bring down blood pressure and get those who are you know close to either high or low blood pressure we get them to the doctors and get them the care that they need so we've done it in Cape Coast we've done it here in Adar and we just basically go to areas and support those communities by giving people the ability to find out their status. This guy right here is really inspiring and I, I hope and believe that you guys will find this story very inspiring to the extent that you shared your friends and family to know a man like Marvin. But yeah, Marvin, can I also buy one of the properties? You absolutely can. I want to have... I, I wanna, I I wanna, no, 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 no. I, I want a beachfront. I can get you a beach front. But he said it's, it's, you already sold out But here. I told you I own four islands. So we're clearing the, the, the land on the second one because I knew that once we came on Maya, people would say, I don't want to be on a condo. I want to let, be on a beach front. Let's do this. Let's we're do selling this. all the four islands, but we need only beach front. You want only do, the beach front. Do you, do you, can we have what a Maya price? Of course you can get the what a Maya price. Can we can have the what a Maya yeah, price. Yeah, I got to show you love. So, yeah. So what is the lowest to the highest? Okay. So our lowest price is 99000 but what I'm going to do is we're going to give any person who's a subscriber to your channel, right, they will be able to get a rebate of $10,000 on the $99,000 So property. they're going to pay $89,000. So $89,000. Listen, let's do this. I'm going to sell each and every property. Oh, are you sure? <laughs> no. I, I, have, I have the best audience in the whole world. Okay. And we're going to prove you wrong. So I am going to be the first person to own one. I'm okay. going to give you my $89,000. No, $89, so how many rooms? Yes, you get a two bedroom. No, I want three. You want three bedrooms? Because I am married. So if you want the three bedrooms, you can get the three bedroom. The price is originally $127. Okay. But I will give it to you with a $15,000 rebate. So you get it for $112,000. Let's do this. Yes. See, the link is in the description. The numbers are in the description call right now even on the screen when you call i'm gonna pick it myself hey yeah that, no that's an assurance <laughs> <laughs> that's an assurance but, oh I, I this is your home eh? yeah no it's beautiful man is, is that how all the units are gonna look like or this is just a different model no this is a different model this was just something we mm -hmm. built so that we have an office on the land but those are some of the homes there the, the two bedroom units are actually bigger than this oh okay this is a smaller one that's that's nice man What, what is so unique about Shark Island? So what is unique about it is that this community has everything you need that you don't need to leave the island. Mm. We have a medical center here. Actually, four of our owners are medical doctors from the U.S. And we actually have two doctors here in Ghana, all of different specialties. So you have the medical center there. So if you have any type of medical condition, we could treat you immediately, sustain you, and then get you to a hospital for any serious um, needs. We have a supermarket that will be put up. So you can get all of your organic foods from our organic farm back there, as well as anything else you need for your house. We have a Wi-Fi cafe that lets the digital nomads who work from their, their laptops that they could then come and they can work here and meet other diasporans and connect. And then the, 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 the kicker of it all is that the community is an entertainment hub, right? So you have the event stage. I'll be bringing artists from the U.S. I, was, I worked in the music industry. I had several top 10 hits, number one on Billboard charts with my artists. And then also I've worked with several major label artists, written songs for them, won several Grammy nominations as well as Grammys. So we'll be bringing those artists and every month you could have a miniature version of Afro Cello or Afro Future as it's now called. And then we will connect them to the diaspora and sell them home so that they don't go back home. Exactly. They bring their skill sets. Because the diaspora also love partying, yeah? Yeah, so they'll yeah. come, they'll party. But now you won't only do it in I, December, I, I, you'll I, do it every month of the year. As soon as you come, I'll change my career to be a musician. So I will also entertain you in here. Yes. <laughs> so that's what makes Shark Island special. No. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for you, doing brother. this for us. Really, I appreciate you. And uh, trust me, you're an inspiration. If you have a message to Africans living in the diaspora, what would that message be? So my message to Africans in the diaspora, as well as African-Americans, is one, you need to bring your capacity back home, Africans in the diaspora, because a lot of Ghanaians and Africans leave and they don't want to come back. But we're in a global economy now. You do not have to live abroad to work and earn money from abroad. And I want to teach them that. 
but also to the African Americans, do not believe the lies that we have been told. Come and see the continent for yourself. Whether it's Ghana, Gambia, South Africa, wherever, but come see for yourself because we have been lied to, we've been bamboozled. And me, you cannot get me to come back to visit, not even. So what, what, are, what are the kind of lies that you had before coming? Ah, man, that people live in trees, you know, lions, tigers, and bears are running around the community, that all Africans are here, poor and flies and big bellies. Man, I saw a Lamborghini in East Lake going. I said, what the hell is that, right? <laughs> Lamborghinis, Bentleys, they're thriving here. And one thing that is a really big lie, most Africans don't have mortgages. They build their houses over five years, so they're more rich than people in America. If the African has an iPhone, they own it. If they have a car, they own it. They don't do all of this credit stuff that we have in America. And I think that that's amazing. And that's what I learned from them. This is my first paid off home with no mortgage. I've Whoa. owned homes in America, but I had a 30 year mortgage. You know what mortgage means? Till death. You're paying on it till you die. But Africans have showed me that I'd rather build small over five years, but I don't pay all that extra money in interest and then they own it. So that's that was the biggest eye opener for me. I think, yeah, are this your client because I'm seeing them around? Oh things. yeah, so you see two people left that just purchased a home. Yeah. But these are actually two of my clients that came to check on their property that bought homes that supported us. Oh wow. We have Marissa from Washington, D.C. Hi. <laughs> I'll let you tell you about her properties and why she chose to uh, work with us. And then I have Kulu, my Eritrean sister. Oh, wow. And I have to credit her husband, Solomon. I, I love them both. We've become like family. But um, Solomon came and he saw the community and he got it. He went and he called his wife. He said, babe, you have to come and see Shark Island. And you know, everybody, you have to talk to the wife first. I'm married now, so I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then Kulu came. But I'll let you tell them about their experience, you know, how we build. But yeah, they came today to check on their property and then they got to meet you. So I'm glad. I'm giving them a great experience all around. <laughs> <laughs> You're happy. We are very happy. Oh, wow. Yes. Nice. So, yeah. so Kulu has a three bedroom unit. Tell about your three bedroom, Kulu. I have a three bedroom, beautiful ones on the um, waterfront. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm one of the first uh, owners of the, so of the, of the. You believed in the dream. Yes. yes. Ooh. It's beautiful and it started like three months ago and I, I cannot believe it's almost finished now. You started this three months ago? Three yes. months ago. Three months 50 ago. Percent. Whoa. It was sand. Yes. yes. <laughs> and and how, how many of them do you own? I own two. What? I'm a big believer in the dream. Ah. <laughs> and of Marvin. Okay. Um, we met like three, four years ago when I first moved to Ghana. Yeah. And he was my neighbor at my business, my first location. Okay. And he had a business there as well. And so he became like a brother to me. And on the way back from buying land in Cape Coast, he was showing me the sea bridge. He said, I'm going to bring these to Ghana. I said, okay, do it, bro. And I came home from U.S. and he bought these islands. And he, he was doing this Beautiful. and cleared the land. I was like, wow. I said, okay, so I want two okay. for me. I want one to live in and one for passive income because this is going to make money. Exactly. And how can I help? So now I'm the international sales director for Shark Island, yes. bringing all that American capacity right back here. into Ghana. Yeah, all welcome you guys home. Yes. Come and buy one yes. and get one free. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, I'm going to get you the free one. Yeah, yeah. Right. No buy free one, one and get one free <laughs> from what am I? The one you buy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. the, good, the good thing is yeah. also, we bought this and I, I, I come to Ghana and then I'm like, you hear all things in, in Europe and the Western, like in Africa, it takes forever. Yeah. And you don't know if you get your money back yeah. or all these stories. It is just, just not not true because and then he is building it's like he started three months ago and every week every two weeks he gets an update through Facebook uh, through your email, email yeah. Yeah. through uh, YouTube even yeah uh, uploading it to YouTube I can check it everything. check our progress so, report yes and yeah. You know that your house is built and you can see it and you can also visit and come whenever you want. Yeah, come babe, you want. just come and like like two weeks ago I called and three weeks ago my family came from the Netherlands. She brought a whole family from the Netherlands to the Netherlands buy units. So buy units and I and he said I said to him, Can I come? He said, Of course you can come. With your own house here. You don't have to ask me. <laughs> yeah. here, so that's nice. And one of the coolest thing about this place is that to get here you need to be in a boat. Yeah. And that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Yes.
I want to say thank you all for believing in Marvin's dream. I'm yet to believe in the dream because I need to own one too. And I believe that you all believe in the dream too, right? Yes. Marvin, you're selling all your units? Yes. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. Oh, don't say you love it. Tell them that, yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> thank you all so much for watching. And I'm going to see you all in the next one. I am Maya.